Have you ever needed to inspect an image in a DaVinci Resolve viewer, you zoom in all the way and the image looks just kind of blurry? Well, today I'm going to share with you three simple ways on how you can disable this pixel filtering that's happening on the viewer itself so you can see the crisp edges of the actual pixels. Let's start by taking a look at the Fusion Page viewer first because that's where the pixels actually start in a DaVinci Resolve pipeline. So with the playhead parked directly over a clip, I'll click the Fusion button and I'll zoom into some pixels. We'll see that it's acting a little bit blurry. The way you zoom in the Fusion Page viewer is actually holding Command or Control while using the mouse wheel to scroll in and it zooms in right to where your cursor is positioned. But you'll notice as I zoom in, the, the image looks a little bit blurry as I zoom in here to this mountain on this t-shirt. The way you actually see it without this blurring or filtering that's happening in the viewer, up in this three dot options menu up here in the upper right, you just disable what is called smooth resize. As soon as you check that, you can now actually see the actual pixels, uh, the distinct edges of the pixels. And as I zoom in, I could go in far and see, okay, here is an exact pixel. And the nice thing I'll tell you about the Fusion Viewer is we get a floating point value that's represented in the lower left of the interface down there where it says DaVinci Resolve Studio 20. You'll see there's a, a value for red, green, blue. And that can be extremely powerful when you need to compare colors against uh, uh, one color against another. So that's the Fusion Page Viewer. If you want this to always be a default on the Fusion Page, the simplest thing is just to right click in the viewer and then come down here to settings save defaults and now every time you open an image in this specific viewer in here the smooth resize will be unchecked just know in fusion there's actually four viewers there is uh, these two different viewers and each of these have a, have a buffer so if you switch to a different buffer you do need to set that default for each viewer now let's take a look at the edit page to see how we modify that viewer so clicking on the edit page i will zoom in to those same mountains on this page, you don't need a modifier to zoom, just the mouse wheel where the cursor is positioned will zoom right on in. And as I zoom in and in and in over here, you'll notice, yeah, that looks kind of blurry. Why does it look so blurry? Well, there's actual pixel filtering that's happening on the viewer itself. So to disable those, all we need to do is change the monitoring settings on the project. So if I come down here to the lower cog, this little gear down here, project settings, and under project settings, master settings, come down to video monitoring. And here's a little trick. I'm going to move this to the side so you can see this happen and I keep the, the viewer open at the same time. So we're looking at master settings, video monitoring, monitor scaling is where we want to be looking. So master settings, video monitoring, monitor scaling. We just changed this from bilinear to basic. And as soon as I do this, if I hit save, and actually if I hold option and save, it'll keep the viewer open so you can see the toggle between the two. And there you go. So now we can see those actual pixel values as you zoom into the viewer. This will also affect the color page viewer because it's the same. But if I change this back to bilinear, you'll see and hit option save, it's blurry again. So typically I prefer to work with it in basic because I need to see every single pixel without the viewer doing this smoothing for me. So I'll click save this time. You can see we can see every single pixel in the image, um, the nice borders around them. Now, lastly, but not least, if you have an Ultra Studio, this next part is really, really cool. And it's about how you can actually send the pixels like this out to your broadcast reference display. Ganging the color page viewer zoom. So this is new to me, but actually on the color page, if you take a look over here, if you have an Ultra Studio or a deck link card, which means you're sending your image out to a reference calibrated display, or maybe it's shared over Looper, but basically what it means is if I zoom into this viewer right now without it enabled, it just zooms the viewer and that, that's fine. So I can zoom in here and see it. But if I want my client to see it on the, you know, a Flanders reference display that's across the room, what you can do is there's actually an option under this three dot options menu. In fact, let me start by I'll hit Z to zoom to fit so we can do this together. Three dot options menu will say video output options and then it's called gang viewer zoom. If I select that, now any signal that's being fed out an IO card from Blackmagic, like an Ultra Studio that I highly recommend, now this is actually being fed out over that display. So if we need to inspect some of those pixels out over the main display, I can see them right there. They're easy for anyone to see. And one more bonus tip on the color page to actually see and record the pixel value of a, one of these individual pixels is if you choose the qualifier down here in the lower left, and then you right click anywhere on the image, it's a right click to say show picker RGB value. 
What this does, is it'll initially show you the 8-bit code values for red, green, and blue pixels. As you can see, if I zoom in here, I can clearly see. At one point, it zooms and goes a little haywire for me, but you can zoom in pretty far enough to actually see different pixel values. So there's those code values, and if you want to see them in 10-bit instead of 8-bit, go under the three-dot options menu up here on the upper right, and then just come down to Show RGB Picker Values in 10-bit. And as soon as you choose that, now you'll see a 10-bit a value, which is a little bit more precise than the 8-bit the value, especially if you have 10-bit footage. Hey, my name is Chadwick. This channel is called Creative Video Tips, where I teach all things about DaVinci Resolve. I really appreciate you hanging out with me and learning this today. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.